This is Twit. Strategic Objective 3.3. Uh, this is a biggie. Uh, and in fact, I'll have something more to say about this next week. I found a, a recent speech that was given. But dated March 2023, so this month, Last week, the Biden administration published its 39-page National Cybersecurity Strategy. I haven't had time to go through the entire document, but if it appears worthwhile, I'll likely cover it in additional detail next week. And in fact, I did see some, th- some stuff about IoT that I want to talk about, too. But one section of the document in particular it was brought to my attention by Mark Fishburne, a listener of this podcast who knew I'd find it interesting, and our listeners will know why when I share it. That section is Strategic Objective 3.3, labeled Shift Liability for Insecure Software and Services. Get a load of what is now part of the United States Official National Cybersecurity Strategy. It says, Markets impose inadequate costs on and often reward those entities that introduced vulnerable products or services into our digital ecosystem. Too many vendors ignore best practices for software development, ship products with insecure default configurations or known vulnerabilities, and integrate third-party software of unvetted or unknown provenance. Software makers are able to leverage their market position to fully disclaim liability by contract, further reducing their incentive to follow secure by design principles or perform pre-release testing. Poor software security greatly increases systemic risk across the digital ecosystem and leaves American citizens bearing the ultimate cost. We must begin to shift liability onto those entities that fail to take responsible, sorry, fail to take reasonable precautions to secure their software while recognizing that even the most advanced software security programs cannot prevent all vulnerabilities. Companies that make software must have the freedom to innovate, but they must also be held liable when they fail to live up to the duty of care they owe consumers, businesses, or critical infrastructure providers. Responsibility must be placed on the stakeholders most capable of taking action to prevent bad outcomes, not on the end users that often bear the consequences of insecure software nor on the open source developer of a component that is integrated into a commercial product. Doing so will drive the market to produce safer products and services while preserving innovation and the ability of startups and other small and medium-sized businesses to compete against market leaders. The administration will work with Congress and the private sector to develop legislation establishing liability for software products and services. Any such legislation should prevent manufacturers and software publishers with market power from fully disclaiming liability by contract and establish higher standards of care for software in specific high-risk scenarios. To begin to shape standards of care for secure software development, the administration will drive the development of an adaptable safe harbor framework to shield from liability companies that securely develop and maintain their software products and services. This safe harbor will draw from current best practices for secure software development, such as the NIST Secure Software Development Framework. It must also evolve over time, incorporating new tools for secure software development, software transparency, and vulnerability discovery. And finally, to further incentivize the adoption of secure software development practices, the administration will encourage coordinated vulnerability disclosure across all technology types and sectors, promote the further development of software bills of material, and develop a process for identifying and mitigating the risk presented by unsupported software that is widely used or supports critical infrastructure. 
In partnership with the private sector and in the open source software community, the federal government will also continue to invest in the development of secure software, including memory safe languages and software development techniques, frameworks, and testing tools. <laughs> wow. Okay, now, obviously, no strategy is law, right? A strategy is only that. And major software publishers have strong lobbying arms in Washington where legislative votes are available to the highest bidder. So nothing here in this 3.3 section is actionable, and there will be a great deal of pushback against any sort of weakening of today's current blanket contractual protections, which we've often noted, you know, is like, well, yeah, you could use the software, but whatever it does, it does, and we don't really know, and if you don't like it, you're, you know, all you can ever do is ask for your money back. That's your maximum recourse. Um, what caught me off guard here was the precision of understanding about the nature of this problem. You know, that one sentence, software makers are able to leverage their market position to fully disclaim liability by contract. In other words, if you don't like it, don't use it. On the other hand, their position doesn't make not using it a practical alternative, right? You know, you, you have to use Microsoft stuff if you're in, in, in the enterprise. So anyway, they said further reducing their incentive to follow secure by design principles or perform pre-release testing. So, you know, I would say the writing is not yet even on the wall, but it's obviously in some people's heads. And it just got written down in the official national cybersecurity strategy for the first time ever. So it's obvious that others have noticed the same irresponsible attitudes toward critical software security that we've been discussing here on this podcast. I mean, you know, the fiasco of Microsoft's printer problems, which they just ignored for six months, which hurt huge numbers of their customers. So it was they'd be li so they'd be liable for this. Yes, which I think is fantastic. I mean, they're yes. not gonna they're not gonna think it's very fantastic. I'm sure. Oh no, baby. Does it mean liable criminally or liable civilly? Like uh, I'm sure it's civil liability. Yeah. and maybe yeah. just opens up the idea that if you were a victim of a, a printer hack, that you could recover losses from Microsoft. Of course, their shrink wrap licenses and all those EULAs and all that say, oh, we're not liable, and oh, you have to well, go. Well, that's just it. You yeah, know, that is their their disclaiming. They're, they're disclaiming liability by contract, which right. this specifically targets and right. says, this is not okay. Good. We Ooh. talked about it on Twitter a little bit, and I wanted, wanted to get your take on it, because that seems a big sea change. And you're right. Uh, will Congress let that go through? Probably not. But yeah, it's, it's, it's good to just shake some trees a little bit, I guess. Well, and and ask if the public would not be yes. you know, for this. So. You know, it's like a anybody who hears this is like, well, yeah, well, of course. why wouldn't they be responsible? Right. Of course. And as I've been saying, it's insane what we have now where there's zero, zero accountability. And we've all, know? we've but, all seen those, you know, disclaimers on boxes of software and so forth that say, you know, not, not, uh, we not representing that this is fit for any purpose whatsoever. And uh, yeah, mer merchantability <laughs> or fitness of use. Yeah. We don't, we don't know. We don't guarantee you drive the, nothing. <laughs> you know, you may drive the car off the lot and the wheels all fall off. Not and my if fault. so, well, you know, we thought we screwed them on tight, but I guess Henry, well, you know, but actually that's that. the difference because car manufacturers are liable. That's my point. Software that manufacturers are not. This is an anomaly in the yeah. in, for for something that has become as important as software has. I agree. You know, and it, it's only because of history, right? Back when it was just like, well, you could store your wife's recipes on your Apple II, you know, and if 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 well, if we, if we lost them, it's, we're sorry. Yeah, you should have held on to the paper copy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it it just and it went from there, right? It never changed. Good. I love yeah, it. This I, is, ho this I hope they this is get this happening. This is good. This is big news. And, and again, just the fact that it's been, been written down, and now people are going to see it and go, "Huh? Yeah. Why is that that way?" You know, it's like, okay, good. 
Do you want to hear about the latest news happening in the tech world from the people who write the article, sometimes from the people who are actually making the news? Well, we got a show for you here at twit.tv. It's called Tech News Weekly. Me, Jason Howell, and my co-host, Micah Sargent, we talk with some amazing people each and every Thursday on Tech News Weekly. And we share a little bit of our own insights in each of us bringing a story of the week. That's at twit.tv slash TNW. Subscribe right now.